call me themselves. They didn't have nobody call for the priest. They called me themselves. You better get here, Reverend. Get here right now. I am leaving now. How's that possible? You you gonna call somebody yourself? You know who to call when you're in trouble. You know who to call when you need help. You know who to call when it's a desperate situation. Desperate situation need desperate men. But what if God can work through you and just what you say is enough to change stuff? See, we work too hard in the spirit. When it all just roll and flow free. You don't have to pump up the spirit, have 17 stars. Have somebody dancing and prancing and flipping around. Now, don't get me wrong, the Holy Ghost moving in a different kind of way. But all somebody got to do is come and say, Hallelujah! And the place goes. Come on, Am I right? But see, the only way the spirit goes from heart to heart, breast to breast, it will miss you if you don't know him. See, quit trying to exercise up in here when you don't exercise at home. You got to come with the anointing already fresh on you. Then you ain't got to work up a sweat. He already know you. The woman was convinced. And because she was convinced, Jesus said unto her these words. Go call, verse 16, thy husband and come hither. Now Jesus despised a lying spirit. He already understood who the woman was. Amen. Quit acting like you're more than who you are. I said quit acting like you're more than whom you really are. If you have not been fully converted, then you always tell somebody, I cannot lay hands on you. Let me put that in the mic in case you missed it for the tape, hey amen. I am not fully converted. You don't want me laying my hands on you. Because you don't really want to know where my hands were last night. Am I right about it? The woman spoke to Jesus. She spoke back. See, Jesus liked to talk back church. Jesus don't say, can I get amen? Jesus said, simply the word of God and the word of God permeates in the hearts of the believers and out of that comes forth a amen. 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 Now watch this. Verse 18. For thou hast had five brothers and the one, let me, let me, let me, let me ever deny this. <laughs> Baby, you don't have five of them. You spoke what? Matter of fact, hold up, dog. The one you're going to now ain't your husband. Now, see, it's obvious. This Samaritan woman didn't look y'all, like y'all. You women here. Because they would have left Jesus' presence in the spirit. Because she had to be in the spirit. To start speaking to him and receive him like this. She said, wait a minute, hold up. What you say? How about you say? Why are you all up in my business like this? Huh? That ain't your real daddy, Joseph, no way. So what the what the scriptures say, how you gonna go that way on me? They weren't getting ready to stone Mary. I heard the story. Now you gonna come down here and try to crack on the sister? Oh, uh -huh. I don't think so. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. When the Holy Ghost is on the inside of you, and you know Jesus is working with you, it'll let you hold your tongue. The reason you can't hold your tongue in spiritual power is because you really ain't that caught up on Jesus. I don't want you to say anything to anybody at any time and have no remorse. If I'm in the spirits on the Lord's day, that's everything. So the woman said to him in this 19 verse, sir, she kept it dignified, sir. 
I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in the mountains. And he said that Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, verse 21, believe me. The hour cometh when ye shall neither worship in the mountains nor Jerusalem. See, if you can't worship down here, you have to even get there to get your praise on. See, worshiping starts in the kitchen at home. <laughs> I'm going to sit on that in a minute. See, worship starts before they come get your car, your house, your woman leave, man. Worship, worship starts before that. See, it didn't say I must worship Ephesus. It said I must worship him <laughs> in spirit and in truth. John said I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. <laughs> it was like a trumpet. It was like a voice I heard behind me. And when I heard it, told me to write these things down. See, when the Lord wants to deal with you, he deals with you in spirit. He ain't trying to talk to you like you. You ain't trying to talk to you like he's God. But unless you know how God talks you like this. God don't talk to you like, hey, girlfriend, no, no, no. He talks to you by his word. His word qualifies him to, to be him because he does not stray from whom he is. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God, and the word became flesh and black among us. We have not some high priest that have not suffered our affliction. God knows just how much you can bear in these latter times. Also, God had so fixed it that he was a suffering savior so you can't say, you don't know how I feel. Yes, I do. Right. Foxes have holes, birds have nests. I ain't even have nowhere to lay my head, but I went home. Right. You got to keep it moving no matter what life has in store for you. Yeah. You got the woman know there's a time we ain't going to be worshiping. Don't worry about that. Don't get caught up on that. Hello. You up on tradition. Don't get caught up on that. Verse 23, this is part of life. He said, thou comest and thou is. True worshipers shall worship the Father and Spirit. This morning, you all exemplify the whole spirituality of true worshipers. Oh my God, my God, every frame, every word, every avenue, you lift it up, God, and pray. That's what the unadulterated word of God does when it touches from heart to heart and breast to breast. Uh -huh. yes, Verse 24, God is Spirit. They must worship him in spirit and in truth. Spirit. You've got to learn to have out-of-body experiences. When I was little, I would be scared to go to sleep. Because when I would fall asleep, my body would freeze and I couldn't move. This happened from about age 11 to maybe 14. I would be so afraid at night. And then I could feel myself leaving my body and I try to count. What do you think I thought acting a fool? Because I I, I want I didn't know what that was all about. I got hurt in a football game and uh, I never forget when I went into the hospital. There was a little girl there and she just came by my room and she stopped, looked back and came in, and she started talking to me. And we were just talking, look, Caucasian girl, we were just talking about a multitude of things. She said, you know what? Sometime when I lay down to sleep, it's this tightness come on me. And a few times, I just got up, walked around the room, and I laid back down real quick because it scared me. I'm like, get out of here. Now, she was 12. Two days later, it was a cold blue in the hospital to her room. After she had told me one of these days, I'm going to get up out my body and not come back. It was a cold blue in her room. She died. She was walking like you and I. But she had that toxic shock syndrome. Remember that was happening years ago? And, 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 and it blew my mind because she told me two days prior to that, one of these days, she had died and knows what I've been going through as a child. One of these days, I'm going to get up out of my body because she told me she had been walking around the room out of her body. One of these days, can I get away? Well, I come to tell you, one of these old days, I'm going to have an out-of-body experience. What about you? <laughs> but until 
until God decides to take me home finally. I'm